Birds and gardens and butterflies and bees, they all go together. Is it any wonder that gardeners feel such remarkably close affinity such, to such little creatures? I've never known a gardener who didn't thrill to the sight of those fluttering, vibrating butterfly wings amongst their blooms and the buzzing of honeybees, bumblebees, carpenter bees, solitary bees, and their zinnias. So good morning from Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry, and today we're going to talk about some of those little creatures, mostly the feathered type. I don't know anyone who just doesn't love birds. It'd be crazy not to. The colors, the forms, the feathers, the flight, the eggs, the nest, everything about them is just so remarkable. The little homes they build from whatever they find laying around <laughs> and the diligence they put into building their nests. All these nests were things that we find um, when autumn comes and they're laying on the ground sometimes or just precariously tucked into a rose bush and I just try to save them because they are so beautiful and so remarkable. But the bird is represented in so many ways all throughout history, well loved and treated with respect in art. And so I do have a special piece of art today that I will talk about at the end of the video regarding birds and a, an art print giveaway. And I would like to offer my subscribers, just like we did with the garden print. This time it's going to be birds. Everywhere I look around here I see or hear birds. Whether they're carved of wood or waddling across the yard, tucked into cupboards, making a joyful noise. As you can hear, you could call that joyful or not. Little wooden birds perch upon our mantles. And on shelves way up high. tucked into a nest that's, oh, about seven stories high under the porch eaves. <coughs> but wherever they are, they're often accompanied by their tiny counterparts. Often congregate in the same places that they do, obviously, the garden or the orchard. So we're going to go over to one of those very popular spots. Fruit tree, this pear tree produces hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pears. Pears are not my favorite fruit, so it stands to reason that this is the tree that would do the best. I actually prefer peaches. But every year, dozens and dozens of them are knocked off the tree because the crows get up there at the top of the tree and I don't know what they're doing but I will I watch them knock dozens of pears onto the ground at one time and if I don't get out here on time the insects get them the geese walk by and take a bite but I do manage to pick up a lot of these and then I just take them up to the donkeys and the sheep and they love it because this is their time of year to get a little bountiful fruit harvest. Just imagine all these little intoxicated bees rolling around in the grass in the late afternoon 
unable to get up off the ground because they can't fly. So here we have a nice healthy helping of some great pears for the girls up in the barn. I'm just glad that none of these pears ever go to waste. So let's go up to the barn and see the girls. All right, you can't have too many. You'll get a tummy ache. This is the only basket I ever made in my life, and it's a melon basket, and I made this 35 years ago. And it's been a really good basket. occurred to me when I was picking sunflowers today and I see that a lot of these are developing their seed they're crinkling up, they're turning yellow, they're drying and we often look at a plant like this and we say oh I've got to get rid of that mess and tear off those dried out ugly leaves and throw them in the trash or put them in the compost heap but when you look at these leaves They've accomplished their task. And you see all the design and beauty in that dying, shriveling leaf. That even as it fades away, it still has a wonderful beauty to it. The lacy habit. Folding of the leaves. the different shades of color. Gives you a new appreciation. Even for something like this. Plants age, we age, things get crinkly and old looking and it seems like they're not worthwhile anymore and think again. <laughs> really, look at the folds and the intricate detail in this leaf. And you can truly say with an open mind that that is just as beautiful as it was when it was bright green and new. There's a certain beauty in every aspect of life and aging. You can really see it when you look at a plant. Sometimes the best vases that you can find for your bouquets are just things that are around your house. This is an old bean crock. It's huge, but it has to be because it's holding these wonderful sunflowers. These are the mid-sized sunflowers. I saved all the big ones outside in the garden. I just left them there for the finches and the birds. But I did want to bring at least a couple sunflowers into the house because they're just so cheerful and sunny. <laughs> hence the sunflower, but they just are such a happy, happy plant, such a happy bloom. And um, in contrast to that bright yellow, I have the purplish pink of the Rose of Sharon blooms. And we have some coneflowers. Even without the petals, the coneflowers make wonderful flower arrangements. Once those petals drop, just go collect some of those for your bouquets because they're just really interesting heads. But the most interesting thing in this entire bouquet are these coneflowers. Now these are green petaled coneflowers and they absolutely are so comical because they sprout out of the very top. 
they sprout these little babies, all kinds of little babies, green petaled babies come out of the cone flower head. And these are fun in your garden, kind of a conversation piece and very delightful to add a little bit of lightheartedness to your bouquet. So this is a fairly sunny and cheerful bouquet for late July and August. That's what's growing in your garden right now. So let's move on to the piece of art entitled Birds of the Garden. This is a piece I actually did six years ago and in those six years I've tried to have it reproduced many times um, but the colors were never satisfactory and so I would only do a few prints at a time but finally we got, were able to get a really good reproduction of this and in celebration of that I'm going to give one away in a drawing to one of you who are subscribers to this channel all you have to do is mention in the comments that you want to be put in the drawing and we'll do the same thing I did with the drawing of the garden print but this is called Birds of the Garden. The original piece was a painted paper cutting, or also known as Scherenschnitte. And um, I did it on parchment paper. I did the drawing on parchment paper. I cut it out with a knife. I painted it with watercolor. I did all the little etchings and calligraphy in ink. And then it's, this one's framed in a fairly ornate frame that I think it's pretty appropriate because it's got such a beautiful little leaf motif. Very English. And this has just been always one of my favorite pieces since I made it, so I'm really happy to get a print of it. But it gives you the name of every bird that's in the picture. Identifying names of every bird in the picture is done in calligraphy down on the bottom border. And there might be a bird in here that you don't recognize the name of, and that would be my Esther. And that is because this little starling right here, that's Esther. Esther is a little bird that I raised from a fledgling. She had a broken wing, and I raised her. And I used to do um, blog posts about her on my, on my Hopalong Hollow Gazette blog. And she was just a darling little, little character. So up here on the top, gives you some bird language. Twitter, chatter, peep, 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 whistle, cackle, hoot, and cheep. Chirp and screech and cock-a-doodle-doo, Twitter, chatter, crow, and coo. I bet you would recognize that cock-a-doodle-doo from our property. <laughs> I mean, there's not a video I can do without having a rooster crow. But this is going to be next week, and the... Um, the reprints, the reproductions, just really are lovely. Uh, the colors have been just reproduced so, so nicely. So, if you're interested in winning, possibly, in the drawing, just tell me that you want your name put in the drawing in your comment. This is actually a copy of the print, framed differently than the original, but you'll be able to frame it whatever way you want because it will be an unframed print that we send. And it really is astonishing how well the printing company reproduced my colors. Actually, I would say though that this one is actually a little more vibrant than the original. So that makes it even more beautiful, really. So until next week, uh, this is Jerry and wishing you a wonderful day full of birdsong. Until next time. Bye.